All right, biology students, welcome back. Um, we are continuing on with our cellular respiration lesson. This is like part two. So if you have not already watched or listened to the cellular respiration lesson, make sure that you do that before you watch this lesson. Otherwise, you're going to be confused. Today, though, we are focusing on fermentation. So you probably... Um, when you think of fermentation, you probably think of bread or alcohol or yogurt, um, which are all great examples of fermentation, foods that are created and drinks that are created through fermentation. But today I want to get down to the nitty gritty and actually talk about the process and how it relates to cellular respiration. Now, before we get into fermentation, I want you to meet Raquel. So Raquel is a 34-year-old nurse. She's been training for the Boston Marathon for two years. Um, it is the day of the race, and the night before the race, she ate a macro-rich meal that included lots of carbohydrates, some fat, and some protein. Um, so it, she tells us, or it tells us here, that her race started great at mile five. Her pace was good. She had a lot of energy probably because of that carbohydrate-rich meal that she ate the night before. Um, at mile 13, her pace began to suffer. So she popped a glucose gummy, which is something that a lot of long-distance runners will do to give a little boost of energy, and it worked. Um, she began to pick up her pace. So it tells us that now she is at mile 20. She only has 6.2 miles left. And she is at the hardest part of the marathon, which is going uphill. So she has one more hill to conquer. And it tells us here that as she goes up the hill, her breathing get, gets harder. Her calves are starting to burn. Her quads are starting to burn. What she is experiencing, experiencing here is called, um, runners will call this hitting a wall. And it's basically where they feel like they just can't go anymore. So their legs are hurting. Every bone in their body is aching. It's hard to catch their breath. Um, and so I introduced Raquel to you and this situa situation to you because this is going to tie into the lesson today. And by the end of the lesson, we're going to come back and revisit this. And I want you to be able to tell me what is taking place inside of the cells of Raquel's body that makes her feel like she's hitting a wall. So let's go through the lesson and then we'll come back and you will be able to um, explain to me what's taking place inside of her quail's body. All right, recall from our previous cellular respiration lesson that we use oxygen to release chemical energy from the food that we eat. So in cellular respiration, our cells take in oxygen and glucose and convert that oxygen and glucose into carbon dioxide water, and then usable energy for our cells in the form of adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. We call this whole process cellular respiration, and overall, cellular respiration is aerobic. So if you'll remember, that means that it requires oxygen. But what if there is no oxygen? What if there's not enough or sufficient amounts of oxygen around? Is there some other pathway that allows cells to extract energy from food if our cells can't get that oxygen? The answer is yes. We call this process fermentation, which is what today's lesson is about. So get this in your notes. Fermentation is a process by which food energy um, or sorry, energy can be released from food molecules when there's no oxygen present. Um, you also need to know that fermentation occurs in the cytoplasm of cells. I'm sure you have experienced this before, but if you've ever exercised or moved something heavy or even played basketball with friends and then noticed the next day that your muscles were really sore, um, what was happening there is as you exercise, the amount of oxygen present in your breathing alone wasn't enough for your muscle cells to generate ATP. So the production of ATP without oxygen still was able to continue through an anaerobic process um, where your cells undergo glycolysis and then fermentation. All right, so glycolysis... If you'll remember back from our cellular respiration lesson, um, glycolysis does not require oxygen. So it's an anaerobic process. Uh, and 
it can take place whether there's oxygen or not. But after glycolysis, your cells have to make a critical decision. So if there is oxygen present, your cells will use that oxygen to convert that glucose into ATP, which we call cellular respiration. So we've already talked about that process in a previous lesson. However, if there is no oxygen, your cells will need to um, undergo cellular respiration, but in the form of fermentation. So we call, we call cellular respiration with oxygen cellular respiration, but if there is no oxygen, we give it a different name. We call it fermentation. Now, there are actually two types of fermentation. So we have lactic acid fermentation, which is going to occur in animals and some bacteria. And in lactic acid fermentation, we're going to take glucose and convert it into pyruvate through glycolysis. And then that's going to produce lactate or lactic acid. So the product of lactic acid fermentation is lactate. In alcoholic fermentation, um, which is done by bacteria and yeast, some bacteria and yeast, um, you have glucose that's going to be um, converted into pyruvate through glycolysis, just like with lactic acid fermentation, um, but the product's going to be different. So we're going to have ethanol and carbon dioxide that are produced with alcoholic fermentation. Both types of fermentation will undergo glycolysis first because remember, glycolysis does not require oxygen. Now here's the breakdown. Um, if muscle cells do not have oxygen to complete aerobic respiration, they're going to perform lactic acid fermentation. So this is going to relate back to Raquel that we talked about earlier. Um, so who actually performs lactic acid fermentation? Um, we mentioned this earlier, but you need to make sure that it's in your notes. So animals, animal cells, like muscle cells, um, and then some bacteria. Where does this take place? This is going to take place in the cytoplasm of the cell. What's going to happen is your cells are un going to undergo glycolysis where they convert that glucose into two pyruvates, and then that pyruvate is going to be broken down into lactic acid. So pyruvate and a little bit of NADH is going to go into the process, and then we're going to get some energy, not a lot. So only two ATPs are produced, um, and then two lactates or lactic acid. This is an anaerobic process, so no oxygen is required for fermentation. Now in alcoholic fermentation, again, yeast, um, and some bacteria will undergo alcoholic fermentation. This, just like lactic acid fermentation, will occur in the cytoplasm of the cell. The cell is going to undergo glycolysis, just like with cellular respiration and just like with lactic acid fermentation. That pyruvate is going to be broken down into something different, though. So instead of um, lactate, this time, pyruvate is going to be broken down into ethanol. And ethanol is a form of alcohol, which is why we call this alcoholic fermentation. So what goes in? We're going to have pyruvate and a little bit of NADH. And then what comes out? We're going to get some carbon dioxide produced. We're going to get some ATP produced, although it's not a lot. Only two ATP are produced. And then some alcohol. This is also an anaerobic process because remember, fermentation is anaerobic. Some of my favorite foods are um, made through fermentation. You might enjoy some of these too. Cheese is one of my favorite. I love yogurt. Um, sauerkraut, kimchi are also examples of foods that are made through lactic acid fermentation. And then you can have foods that are made through alcoholic fermentation as well. So um, bread is a great example of that. And then you can have some drinks made this way too. So wine and beer are both um, drinks that are generated through alcoholic fermentation. All right, just quick recap of the lesson. Um, all types of respiration include glycolysis. So cellular respiration, um, lactic acid fermentation, fermentation, 
alcoholic fermentation. They're all going to go through glycolysis because glycolysis does not require oxygen. It's anaerobic. All types of respiration are going to make some form of ATP. Now, um, we're going to get a lot more ATP with cellular respiration than with fermentation, but they all make some, some form of ATP. Aerobic respiration is going to require oxygen. Anaerobic respiration is going to occur without oxygen. And an example of anaerobic respiration would include fermentation. Now, if I were to ask you which type of respiration is more efficient, hopefully you will be able to tell me that aerobic respiration is much more efficient because remember from cellular respiration, 34, 32 to 34 ATP molecules are going to be produced from aerobic respiration. And through fermentation, we only get two ATP molecules. So aerobic respiration is much more efficient. We did talk about today that there are two types of fermentation. So we have lactic acid fermentation, um, which is going to produce lactate or lactic acid. This is why your muscles burn um, or you become sore when you have that lactic acid built up in your muscle cells. You become sore the next day. Um, and then we have alcoholic fermentation, which is going to produce ethanol, which is a form of alcohol, and um, carbon dioxide. Now, going back to Raquel, now that we've discussed what happens in muscle cells um, when they can't get the oxygen they need, we do know that they're going to go through fermentation, and fermentation is not going to produce the oxygen um, that she was producing when her body cells were going through cellular respiration. So I want to back up just a little bit. Um, so long-distance runners like marathoners um, that have to run 26.2 miles, which can't even imagine. Um, they have to fuel their body before a race. So a lot of runners will do what's called carb loading, where they eat lots of carbohydrates. They're also going to eat a little bit of fat, a little bit of protein with those carbohydrates um, so that they have enough fuel to power them. They're also going to train. So we learned from um, this information that Raquel did train for two years prior to this race. So her sales are in the habit of um, getting the energy that they need when the oxygen isn't present. Um, so what has happened with Raquel at mile 20 is her body has used the carbohydrates from her previous meal. Um, and what's beginning to happen is those carbohydrates are being depleted. So her body is having to, her cells are having to tap into that glycogen storage What's probably happened at this point at mile 20 is she's probably used that up. And so we know from macromolecules lesson that um, after our bodies burn all the carbohydrates and the glycogen storage has been depleted, then our cells will start to burn lipids or fats um, for energy. And so that's probably what's happening here because when the body burns fat, that requires more oxygen, it's going to require more energy, more time to burn, um, and her breathing is getting harder because um, she is not able to get the oxygen that she needs, and she feels this depletion, this sudden depletion. Um, and so her body has had to, her cells have had to say, okay, we're not getting the oxygen that we need through cellular respiration, so we are going to have to switch over to fermentation. Why does she feel weak? Why does she feel her quads burning? There's two different answers. So her calves and quads are burning because of that lactic acid that's being produced um, through fermentation, and then she feels depleted because, remember, that fermentation only produces two ATPs. Prior, when she was doing cellular respiration, um, her her body was generating 34 ATPs, 32 to 34. So um, that's a significant decrease in energy. Um, will she make it? We don't know, um, but it does sort of tie in a real life situation to what we have talked about. All right, I will see you 